Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. Hope nobody blew away in that wind. Sure glad we didn't have that puppy when the corn was standing in the field. Oh wait, some of you did this past season. Hmm, maybe too soon. Maybe that's the big win for this year, and we'll not have to deal with it for this growing season. And yes, I said this growing season. Hard to believe planters will be rolling in 40 days or so. Are you ready? Some of you guys up north pushing snow this morning may not believe it, but the calendar said so. Today's question is one that I've answered a number of times this winter. It deals with the four R's of nitrogen, especially the question of source. Many discussions on what is the best source, urea, 32%, 28%, ammonium sulfate, and hydrous ammonia. And a lot of discussion around crop safety, soil health, loss of nitrogen to the water, to the air, ease of application. We can spend hours in that discussion alone, but let's take it down to how the corn plant sees it. The corn plant is going to use both ammonium, NH4, and nitrate as its food source. It can use ammonium the most efficient. But the amount of ammonium, NH4, that's in the soil is usually low due to the fact that that's what the microbes want. The corn is just no competition for the soil microbes. So what the microbes want, the microbes get. What's left over is what the corn plant gets. So at the soil level of ammonium out there and nitrate, corn plants and microbes don't care um, where it came from, what the source is. They want either ammonium or nitrate. So whether it's 28% anhydrous ammonia, manure, or so soil mineralization, no matter what the original source uh, is, the breakdown to the end product, that end product is what they're after. Similar to sugar. There's a lot of ways to get sugar. In the end, they're, they're the same no matter what your ex-beer supplier tells you. So it doesn't matter what the source, what source you use as long as you meet the plant needs when it needs it. The source has limitations on placement and timing when it comes to the other two 4Rs. You know, you can't put anhydrous ammonia two over and two down next to the seat. You shouldn't apply your total nitrogen program in the fall as 28%. We don't have inhibitors strong enough uh, to protect it. Even if we did, 25% of that 28 is nitrate, and there's no way to protect nitrate. You can't wide drop anhydrous ammonia. So again, the source is going to have some effect on how you implement your timing and your placement. The main goal, though, is to keep the plant's needs in front on your plan, no matter what that source is. The discussion of using anhydrous or 28% in the side dress pass is one that gets a lot of discussion. I hear a lot of pros and cons both ways as this discussion develops. Anhydrous is hard on the soil, not safe to use. Window gets tight when you're letting the corn get big enough to put your anhydrous on so you don't cover it up, but still not too big to get through. To the other side, it's cheap. It lasts longer into the back end of the season. Set up your plan to keep that corn happy, not letting it have a bad day through the whole growing season. I don't care what source it is as long as we get that job done. When we side dress anhydrous ammonia, it takes at least two if not three weeks for that core to tame down enough for the crop to use it. If you're side dressing yellow corn, your corn's still going to suffer for another two weeks. If we had side dressed the yellow corn with 28% and a Y drop, we could have seen the corn respond in four or five days. On the flip side, if it takes two or three weeks before the uh, side dress anhydrous can actually kick in and, and move the plant, it is also protected in that time period from loss, so it gives you more staying power more nitrogen to finish on the back side. Meaning if your plan was to have happy corn, you're going to have to have that corn happy for three weeks past when you side dress 
to give time for that anhydrous to kick in. So you got to plan for an overlap. You're not just going to get there enough to keep that corn happy till the day you side dress. You got to overlap those passes. Make sure that this plant's going to be happy for at least two or three weeks past when your side dressing application is going to be put there. For the guys in corn on corn who didn't get their fall tillage done till late or plan to do this tillage in the spring, the carbon penalty will be considerably bigger than what they're used to when they do fall tillage. This needs to be put into your spring nitrogen plants. Some of you corn on corn guys will switch to no-till corn or uh, spring strip-till corn. By leaving the large quantities of residue above ground, you will lessen the carbon penalty. Some of you long-term no-till rotational corn bean growers will be forced to do spring tillage because of the fall harvest ruts in the field. Fields that have been no-tilled for years build up a carbon layer at the surface, and when they get tilled, they too will have a much higher carbon penalty uh, than what we're typically seeing in a corn bean no-till rotation. And that carbon penalty needs to be attended to. Can the carbon penalty be managed from just raising the rate? And that's one question I said, well, what if I just put another 40 pounds in my anhydrous side dress? Will that fix the carbon penalty? Well, not if it's not there when the, where the plant can reach it. If it's in a surface broadcast in the spring, the higher rates will help put help, but raising the side dress rate won't do it. Talking with a grower in Cedar Falls, Iowa last week, who didn't get his anhydrous on last fall, wanted to know if going to a higher rate of anhydrous as soon as he could possibly go in a side dress would handle his carbon penalty in corn on corn. He typically puts all of his nitrogen on in the fall as anhydrous. I asked him if his corn on corn usually shows nitrogen stress when he applies it all in the fall. He said, yes, it, it turns yellow, but it usually only for a week or two, and then it comes out of it, feeling that that wasn't too bad. Well, the answer to his question is no. Cydress anhydrous will not pay the carbon penalty. In this case, the fall applied anhydrous was not taking care of the carbon penalty either. To him, two weeks of yellow corn was normal in corn on corn, but we don't want that. It's too much yield lost by the time we get that corn back green. And side dressing anhydrous will give him four or five weeks of yellow corn. And remember, corn will be experiencing nitrogen stress long before it turns yellow. So when it turns yellow and you can see it from the road, that's some pretty serious stress. But this is going to be stressed before it gets that severe. So in this case, he's already experiencing stress from the carbon penalty because he's not managing it. And now he's going to side dress this nitrogen and stretch that stress out for another um, three, four, maybe five weeks. So definitely all of his what we call L1 hybrids are really going to get crippled in that scenario. Talking with him about using a different source so he could use some placement and timing to handle the carbon penalty, his concern was the cost of liquid was just too high. Managing the carbon penalty can improve yields 40 bushel we've seen in our plots. So getting wrapped up in 10, 15, 20, even $30 more for nitrogen that you can utilize to manage the carbon penalty when the carbon penalty is coming at a cost of $140 or $50. So in this case, he could be saving $25 or $30 bucks and giving up $150 in yield. So we got to think this whole process through as far as just what is the true cost of that nitrogen. Granted, there's different sources, and some are cheaper, and some can be placed in different places. We still can't put 28%, for instance, in the furrow. We're going to burn the seed, but we can put 28 on with the corn planter, and we can keep this corn plant happy while we're going through that carbon penalty. I do predict we will see a lot of ugly corn this spring, mainly to the challenges that the fall brought to the farmers and the farmer's not making the right adjustment for it. So don't get um, tied up on price and soil microbes and, and, or standard operating procedures and let that drive your 2019 nitrogen plan without thinking of what the plant needs and when it needs it. So happy corn, happy farmer. To stay up to date, 
Check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.